Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we've got a tutorial with three distinct, different speed line style effects. A couple which you could see in an anime, and one is a warp drive style effect that you would see in space, and you will see them all on the screen. We'll look at creating them all today. They'll all be up on my Patreon to get access to all the prefabs, the projects, all the materials, and everything that you need. But you'll be able to create these for absolutely free. So if you are interested, be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 125 different scripts, assets, and projects you can't find anywhere else. Be sure to throw a like on this video and subscribe because it would really help me out. And we've got a tutorial today on creating anime style speed lines in a sort of classical speed style effect. First of all, what you want to do is you want to create a new particle by right clicking on your hierarchy, choosing effects, choosing particle system. We're just going to name this to anime speed lines. I'm just going to call this classic. Then I'm going to right click on the transforms and just click reset. So we're going to need to create a new material to hold the sprite that we're going to use for the effect. So in the project, right click, create and choose material. I've just renamed this to spike. Make sure that it's particles and standard and lit. Make sure that it's a rendering mode is fade so we can take into account transparency. I'm just going to use an image which you can get on my Patreon or it's just a triangle which is stretched really long, which is a 1024 canvas by 128. Make sure it's Sprite 2D UI. Add that to your Sprite material, then go down to the renderer on the particle system and drag the spike in there. Now what we need to do is make sure that we put the spike or the render mode onto stretch billboard so that we can stretch that particle out. Then we need to go to the top of our particle system and go to our 3D start size, which we can now adjust how we want this to look. So we could set the Y value to, let's say, about six, because we're going to make this really long and thin. And then what we can do is go to shape, set it from cone to circle. We're going to set maybe the radius to around 20 because you can see it there. What I'm going to do is grab the rotate tool, just hold control and rotate this 90 degrees so we can see it and you can position this any way you want. So I'm going to position it roughly in the center like that. We're going to set the radius thickness to zero because we don't need it to be really close to the center. Then if you also want to adjust how far in from the center it is, adjust the radius, but I'm going to leave it on around 20. Then we can go on to our emission and you can set that to around 100. You can set that to slightly less if you don't want to be, to be quite as hectic. We can set it to 75. We'll go back to the top and we'll set the duration to one because if we take off looping and just press play, it could just be a particle effect that we play once, but I'm going to leave it on looping for this just to show. Then we can set our start speed to around 15. This could be higher if you want the effect more vivid in your face. You can set the start lifetime. You can see here in my scene, if I set it down to two, we just get less particles around the edge. We could even set it to one if we don't need it, then it saves some performance. Then we can change possibly the color between two constants. So we can we have, like I did in the beginning, we have a red which goes to a, a slight another red. Then you could do a color over lifetime if you wanted to add two points here and then fade out when it spawns and when it ends. Like so, if you wanted a more very subtle effect on the edges. Creating some 2D style anime kind of speed lines which can use to simulate the sense of speed whether that's a particle for 3D or 2D. So what you want to do to start with, I've just got a main camera and I've just set the background to white just so we can see it nice and easily. We're going to right click in the hierarchy, choose effects, choose particle system. We're going to just call this our 2D horizontal speed lines. Then we're going to right click at the top, reset the transforms. So we've just got it in the center. Now you can't really see my particle effects. So I'm just going to change the color to a little bit darker so you can see it from now. What we're going to do is create and adjust the particle slightly. You could use a default particle, but I've just got a circle here, which is a circle from Photoshop with a transparent background and it's got a slight glow around the edge. Really easy to create, import that in and just make sure that it's a Sprite 2D UI. Create a new material by right clicking, create and choose material. Then make sure it's set to particles, standard unlit. Make sure the rendering mode is fade and add your texture to the albedo slot. Then when you go back on the particle, you can go to the renderer and make sure that you drag your sprite that you've made onto there and you can see it like this. Then what we want to do is set the render mode to stretched billboard because we want to stretch these particles out. 
So we want to make that sort of very thin lined effect. Then we're going to go to the top of the particle and do to 3D start size. And we're going to have the X as 0.05. We'll keep the Y as 1 and then have the Z at 0.05 as well. Start color quite dark and we can remove the transparency down to say like 65, 70%. You can mess around with this and see how you'd like it. I'm going to start by setting the duration of one because we don't need it to last quite as long. What we're going to do is go down to the emission and set that to 100. So we admit a lot more particles. It looks almost like a machine gun. Then we can go to the shape and set the shape to box. Then we might set the Y scale to around 21. We just want it to encapsulate the top of our, you know, entire screen that we have. And you can leave the normal Z on about one because it moves from left to right. Then what you can do is go to the scale at the top on the transform and just scale out the Z axes. Then we'll get a much longer particle. And then we can grab the particle and just move it along the screen so it covers the entire area. And then we can increase the speed to say around 35 and we get a much greater effect. But as you can see here now, because the speed particles are much longer, they're go really really far so what we could do is we could decrease the start lifetime we could have it two then even have it to one and you can adjust the speed if you need it to move any faster or slower than you had before and you create yourself an idea of speed that you could imagine stuff running through this if it was on a 2d sort of style with characters moving across or a transition that you might have between your game and this is creating a warp drive style speed effect as if you were going through space or some other transition that you might have so we're going to start off by right clicking in the hierarchy choose effects choose particle system we're just going to call this our warp drive style effect i'm going to right click the transform and click reset because we want that just to be zeroed out in exactly the place we want it to be you want to base this where your main camera is. You can see my main camera is around here. We want the particles to face the main camera. So we can select the rotate tool and just rotate 90 degrees. So it's facing in front of our camera. We might want to just grab the move tool and just position it roughly there in the center. We want to create ourselves a particle, which we want to be more sort of bright and luminescent. So we can right click create material. Then once you create your material, you can go to the legacy shaders you can go to particles and you can go to additive. Then in your material, you can just select the default particle and you can just keep, keep that on default. You can go back to your warp drive effect, add the particle into the renderer of the shader. Then on the render mode, you can set that to stretch billboard because we want to stretch the particles out. Then we can go to the top and you can look at 3D start size, tick the box and we can set the Y scale to around seven. So we get really stretched out particles. We can set the X to around 0.25 and the Z also to 0.25. So we get really thin looking particles as well. Let's go to the emission tab. and I'm going to set this to around 125. And then we get like, we could be going into the sort of light of heaven at this point. And then from here, we can go to the shape and make sure that it stays on cone. Then you want the angle to be zero or something like that. Then you can set the radius to five. Then we get the effect. You might need at any point to just shift your particle around if you so wish. And you can bring it closer or move it further away from you, your camera. If you want a different look of the effect, you can create the sense of it being so close and very speedy. You can set the start speed to around 35. And you can see we can set the start lifetime to maybe 1.5 just so that it doesn't go too much past our main camera you can adjust the radius if you want the overall particle effect to be much larger and you can also set the angle the overall angle if you don't want the particle effect to be so focused in the middle of the effect then we can close up the shape go to the color over lifetime and then if we choose the color and we just set a point in the middle at the top and select the point on the left and take the alpha all the way down and the point on the right we take the alpha all the way down. We get a much, much softer effect when we're looking to move through space. And we can obviously go to the start color and we could change this to whatever we might like. A nice orangey effect. And you could change the scale of your particles to make them slightly bigger. You could set the color between two particular colors if you wanted. A little bit of variation. And what you could even do is duplicate your original material. You could set the emission slightly down to 100 and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get rid of just have one color and just set this to a blue and then we can play both of the particles together and then we can get our cool style warp drive effect and remember you can just all these settings 
pull it closer or further away from your camera and be able to set it however you might want it to be. Let me know what you think in the comments because I'm always eager to learn new tips, tricks and the things that you might want to see in the future. So be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 125 different scripts, projects, assets you can't find anywhere else. Come and chat to me on Discord. Check out my great assets on the Unity Asset Store and bonus discounts on my website which you can get money off everything. So thank you to all my amazing patrons, all the fantastic subscribers, and everybody who comes to watch this video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.